Four Worlds development is based on the medicine wheel. The medicine wheel is a sim symbolic tool that is found in the Western Hemisphere throughout tribes of North and South and Central America. You find it expressed in many different ways, but it all speaks to the theme of uh, those. It explains the, the dimensions of human beings. It explains our relationship to the universe. It brings out those elements in the universe that explains the wholeness or the interconnectedness or the interrelationship that we all have in this life. And so, in short, that's what Four Wheels Development Project is about. And now the thing is, is that we understand and we do appreciate that non-Native people have their certain gifts and their certain talents that they have shared and contributed to all people throughout the world. And we understand another principle of life, and that is change. And that all things, all of the universe is constantly engaged in a process of change. So we, we, in moving with this change, we have reached out to our non-native friends out here and really searched for some of their best thinking to incorporate into their four worlds development. When we're talking about four worlds development. We're talking about the respect of humanity, which is the family of, of the human nation. I see really a cleansing process that is taking place. And I believe that uh, there are certain things within a culture or a group of people that will remain. But I also see a movement, and again this is reflected back to the, to the principle of change, of pro, uh, the process of change. When I, like you see all these, you know, really uh, traumatic things that are happening throughout the world, there is a lot of hurt out there, and that is true. But uh, it is my belief that the hurt in itself serves an educational pur uh, purpose in that it enables you to become a stronger individual, and in that uh, it's to enhance and, and to enrich you. If we can keep that in mind as we begin to talk about what hurt is, if we can recognize and truly uh, reclaim again the true nature of who we are as people, and I'm not just talking about Native people, I'm talking about all people. And that is, we have got to, to recognize again that all human beings are born highly intelligent. All human beings are naturally warm, loving, and compassionate. All human beings are naturally cooperative and have a tremendous amount of energy and zest for life. If we can keep that in mind, I think that, uh, and that is really who we are as, as people. You see that with children. Uh, you see a, a baby uh, who just wakes up in the morning and is very happy and everybody is a friend. Uh, you see a, 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 a child that is uh, very loving and just wants to express that, that love within, it, within itself, you know, and share, share that. And then, uh, but what happens to us is that earlier on we get hurt. We get hurt from 
uh, people around us, uh, who themselves, by the way, are very hurt. Uh, and if we can uh, take the initiative to really understand what happens to us in our mind, in the operation of our intelligence, how that hurt affects us. Uh, if we can understand, for example, uh, of how I may behave in a very rigid and ineffective way, if I can uh, really stop and think, when did that happen? But it, it's got to happen in a very warm and very safe environment, all supporting and all encouraging each other to, to take a look at it. And now this is, the, this is the thing that I really believe in, and that is in order for Native people to create a better vision and to really put into action those things that are going to bring about a much healthier and more productive uh, life for their future, we've got to look to the past. We've got to understand uh, the psychological history of Native people. And we've got to acknowledge that. We've got to accept the hurts that happened to us. But at the same time, we cannot afford any longer to stop there and to hang on to this hurt, but to, to step forth and to, to recognize, to identify, uh, to confront and to deal with those hurts within us. Uh, because if we are talking about unity, not just within a, a Native community or a, a band or a tribe, but the unity of the, of the human race has got to begin within ourselves. You know, in the society out here, we have uh, the mentality that if a person is crying, that you you hand the person a clinics and tell them, hey, that's all right, you know, uh, stop crying, you know, or a good example is with little boys, you know, um, and I think as women, sometimes we're guilty of this, in that we tell our son, stop crying, big boys don't cry. When we, when we understand that the tear itself is not the pain, but the release of the pain within ourselves. If we could understand that, and understand that the tears serve a purpose, uh, it's the body's way of naturally cleansing itself out, and overcome these, these uh, shortcomings or misunderstandings about tears, and effectively help our relative through listening and allow those feelings of her to come out through tears. What I'm saying is that we have, we've got to re-examine uh, how we think of, of hurt and how we think of, of physical pain. We began by talking about one of the pains, I guess, or one of the symptoms being alcohol abuse. Is that integral or, or very important to your project? Oh yes, that's the, the whole purpose behind that. Uh, because, you know, alcoholism and drug abuse is not only prevalent to Native communities, but to all over the world. And uh, so we're, we're taking a stand on this through an educational approach. Uh, and our goal is to eliminate alcoholism and drug abuse from Native communities in Canada by the year 2000. Is alcohol abuse a more dangerous or terrifying or prevalent problem for Native people than any other? It's all that, and it's the number one, one, number one problem in Native communities, and it affects every uh, family, indirectly or directly. We also believe that, you know, it's a prime example of the hurt of one is the hurt of all. Uh, but also at the same time, we believe that the honor of one is also the honor of all. 
Uh, so when we're talking about uh, alcohol and drug abuse as a problem, we're talking about every single Native person in Canada and in North America, really. One of the phrases I've heard from your presentations is a, a phrase, universals, commonalities. Can you describe that? Well, when we're talking about universals or commonalities, we're talking about those cultural uh, values and ideals that are found common in all cultures throughout the world. In all cultures, there are, there's the value of forgiveness, love, respect. All cultures have a way of praying. All cultures make offerings and sacrifices. All cultures have songs and dancing. All cultures have social games and festivities. And that's what we're, we refer to as cultural universals. When we're talking about cultural specifics, we're talking about how groups of people express their way of respect for the elder. For example, in my tribe, when you show respect to an elder, you don't walk in front of that elder. Whereas in another tribe, they don't walk behind an elder. One of the things that really makes me feel really excited is that, that Native people are coming together and we are addressing these things that create this unity and divisiveness in our, our communities. But all over, I, all over the communities, I see the excitement, um, the curiosity of wanting to become involved. I see women bringing their husbands along to be a part of these kind of gatherings. I see our, our non-native friends, you know, coming in and participating in our, our cultural activities, the ceremonies, and the dancing, and the singing. And I see them um, really wanting to, to understand, even to the point where they too are beginning to call our Native elders, elders. That, are, that I really like that, uh, because it, it makes me more aware of my, even my own elders. I, Sometimes, you know, kind of take them for granted, which I shouldn't. But it makes me feel, hey, that's nice that they call my elder an elder. Or I see them going up there and trying to dance, you know, and, and be, become a part of, of the power. Or I see them sitting very reverently um, in a ceremony with the understanding and that uh, this is our way of expressing our feelings of, of respect and thanksgiving to the creator of all things. Um, so there, there's a lot of, uh, the, lot of uh, good things that are beginning to happen. There's a tremendous move across, especially in this northwestern part of Canada, uh, people get coming together to gatherings like this to to help each other to recover from those hurts. Thank you for sharing it with me. Thank you.